Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for being here. I'm Regina de Freitas. It's a really exciting moment for me to be here after a long six-year ride. Actually, the idea of greening schoolyards started forming in my mind when I was searching for schools for my sons 16 years ago. It was a pleasure to work on an idea that I believe in. So I don't have enough time to thank everybody. I should thank, but I would like to mention a few people that helped this project come to fruition. I want to thank the teachers, principal, PTA, the green team, a group of parents at Aldama Elementary School who are really pushing to green their schoolyard. Um, I want to acknowledge the presence of a few people here, Mr. Tito Campos from Community School Administration for, for administration for being here. I want to thank Meg, Jim, and Stephanie for guiding us through this path, and I want to also thank all my cohorts and teachers for being a constant inspiration all these years. <laughs> Greening in schoolyards, ensuring all children have access to green spaces. The intention of this project is to connect children living in urban areas with nature. A green schoolyard can have an impact on children's health and well-being, especially in neighborhoods that are economically challenged. This project aims to turn Aldama Elementary School outdoor grounds into a green schoolyard. Um, as you can see in these photos, um, their main concerns are lack of shade where children play and hang out in an abundance of asphalt that helps to increase the heat island effect. So that's, those are issues that most of his public schools in LA um, has. The school is located in Highland Park, a neighborhood in the northeast area of Los Angeles. There are just a few, there are some regional parks a mile or so away from the school, but no community parks at walking distance. The closest one, it's about 8.0 miles away. The student body reflects the profile of the neighborhood. 86% of the students are of Latin ethnicity, and English is a second language for 49% of those students. And there are about nine children enrolled in the special education program. Um, other users also include teachers, administration, staff members, and student family. And the stakeholders, aside from the users, are the neighborhood community, city of LA, city of LA and the environment. The goals for this project are aligned with the principles of the Green Schoolyard Movement and the LAUSD Initiative for Sustainable Schoolyards. They include improving school in these categories, waste reduction, campus ecology, schools high performance, education and environmental awareness, water care, energy conservation, students' mental health, and improvement of their well-being. The objectives of the program focuses on the environment, children well-being, and the community. LAUSD recommends 30% green outdoor space in school campuses, a comfortable and healthy learning environment, as well as rising environmental awareness. This chart expresses the components I'm suggesting for this design and how they fulfill LAUSD and the Green Schoolyard Movement guidelines. As you can see on top of each column, there is an icon that represents a guideline. For instance, introducing a calm reading um, and hangout area would fulfill two of those categories, uh, two of those guidelines, well-being and mental health. On the other hand, by increasing tree canopy, um, it would fulfill all the guidelines and so on. A very successful case I would like to share with you is Eagle Rock Elementary. It's in the same neighborhood as Aldama, um, and they face the same issues. After they greened their yard, the results were a decrease of sedentary behavior, physical and verbal conflict declined, and temperature in the, green, in the greened areas was, was reduced by 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Another successful case is Brent Elementary in DC. They replaced 1,500 square feet of asphalt and created some nature 
classrooms. And the result was an increase in demand for enrollment, attendance rate, and reading scores. At Coic First School in England, they see a green, um, a green school as a live entity. Entity. They're always constantly implementing new components. They, uh, they've been greening their school for 18 years, and they even have an after-school program that includes garden maintenance, and as a result, garden um, maintenance costs are very low. So let's take a look at Aldama, our site. Aldama is located in a, in a residential area, and it has a multi-layered topography. This is the entrance level where the main, main building is, and there are administration, classrooms, um, auditorium, and library. And on a lower level, what we call main yard, there are classrooms and an open yard. In a lower level, what we call lower yard, there are no class, there's no classrooms, and that it's an open area where kids um, play. And on the other side of a 10 feet um, chain link fence, there is what I call the wild area. This is the chain link fence um, surrounding the wild area that the kids don't have access. In these pictures here, you can see uh, um, what the wild area look like. And at the bottom, when there's change of elevation, that's what you have asphalted sloped walls. The younger kids spend their recess time at the main yard. There is no shade, there is a play, playground over here, and there is no sun uh, protection from the sun for the kids or the classrooms. Older kids spend uh, their recess in the main area, in, in the main, um, I'm sorry, at the lower yard. And the ETK students and the special education students have this courtyard here without any shade in its concrete area. By the way, ETK stands for Early Transitional Kindergarten. So there are very young kids. This diagram and pictures show that 70%, 74% of the site has impermeable surface. Um, but 99% of the area students have access has impermeable surface, as you can see on the pictures um, down here. The tree canopy study shows that 6.5% of the play area has, canopy, has tree canopy. So there's a huge opportunity to plant trees in all these areas, including the parking lot. Here you can see a picture of the ETK area without any shade with concrete surface. Some of the features I consider a downside of the site are the amount of permeable surface, and some of it has to stay in order for emergency and delivery vehicles to access the, the, the yard. Also lack of shade, and the buildings in this area constrains some of the opportunity for circulation, as well as the chain link fence that cannot be removed and separate kids from the wild area. The site is surrounded by green that students don't have access. It's like a reversed oasis. The greatest opportunity is to turn impermeable surfaces into green spaces and allow students to have access to green areas. So Aldama Elementary is the home of the hawks. And I got inspiration from the hawk's nest to develop this concept. Through my research, I found a text by the French philosopher Gaston Bachelin, where he compares the home to a nest and he says that home is our space in the world, is our first universe. It's a setting for our dreams and memories. So the nest is a very inspiring element in shape and in meaning. In shape, it gives me idea for tunnels, tubes, um, entryway, passageway, crawling spaces, huts, shacks, amphitheater. Um, and in meaning, the nest is a safe, comfort, and warm place. It's a place where birds grow and experience until they're ready to feel secure, to fly on their own and explore the world. So after playing with this metaphor and trying different concepts, this is the design that most manifests this idea. The students will arrive at the school greeted by a beautiful drought tolerant garden and some bioswales demonstrations. The main yard now, the core of the nest or the heart of the school is an open lawn. Um, the classrooms are moved to the side to create that space. 
The lower yard has a sports, a sports field and a new amphitheater. Um, there is a playground area open to the community. There is a, a wildlife observation deck where the wild area is. Um, there is a watershed demo. The vegetable area, the vegetable garden area got improved and the ETK and the special kids air, um, courtyard got some shade. In the next few slides, I'm going to show you more in detail these areas. And let's start with the ETK and special education kids courtyard. So adjacent to it, there is the teacher's courtyard that now has shade and a nice seating area. And the kids' courtyard has a sensorial sand pool surrounded by tree log and boulders and trees that um, create some shade and um, an overhead uh, to allow for an outdoor classroom or hang out in the shade. The service area and the parking lot uh, gained um, permeable surface and the parking lot was redesigned for a safer parking experience. In this section, you can see um, the courtyard. Here is an example of what is a sensorial sand pool and a sensorial path with different various materials, I mean, with various materials so the kids can experience with that. And I also have a um, experimental musical instrument um, idea here. Here is a closer look of what an, of the, the the courtyard would look like. Kids playing on the on the sensorial. Um, sand pool and hanging out under the shade. Let's go to the community park now. I added a pedestrian gate adjacent to the vehicle entrance so the community can access the park this way and they will encounter a uh, playground with shade with an, and also um, natural material play, um, play apparatus. Adjacent to it and only in the community that don't have access to this area actually is the climbing wall that used to be asphalted and now is built with um, sustainable materials. This is for the students access only. As you can see here, this is what I mean by um, um, a, a climbing wall, a fun climbing wall for kids, right? And, and you can see in this section how um, the park here and the climbing wall would be on this side. Here, you can take a closer look at what the park would look like. This is a nest-inspired climbing apparatus, and this is a nest-inspired park entrance, and the, the, the surface would be all permeable material. So the main courtyard, now it's this open lawn, and it's surrounded by, as I, I suggested, um, grass streets, so vehicles can access the yard. Um, and the classrooms, and, and behind the classrooms, there are courtyards that I like to also call them outdoor classrooms. I was very in, um, uh, inspired or influenced by the pandemic, and I really thought about creating spaces outdoor that could be used as performance spaces or outdoor classrooms. For instance, this amphitheater over here that it's on that um, sloped wall. There is another amphitheater here. This is a way of bringing kids back to school in a safer, um, in a safer manner and, and keep that um, idea going forward. So the courtyards behind the classrooms have elements that will tie to the curriculum according to the grade. Here is a look at a section cut of the, the, the main yard with some mounds. Um, here at the bottom, you can see um, inspirational ideas for a courtyard and outdoor classrooms. This is a different view of the main courtyard. You can see kids hanging out under the trees that now has shade. And the leftover asphalted surface uh, should be Oh. Sorry. The leftover asphalt surface should be uh, coated with solar reflective paint. So looking at the lower yard, um, this is a place, it's a multi-use. Uh, older kids spend recess here also is where the school has its functions. So it has 
um, asphalt and it's coated with reflective paint so vehicles can access to deliver material. And there is a sports field and I created new areas for kids to hang out because older kids like to hang out with their friends now. They're, they're sort of like to do their own thing. And there is also an amphitheater here. Um, this is the uh, a section of the lower yard. And down here, I, I give you some examples or inspirational ideas. Um, a chatter box for kids to, to chat and have some privacy with their friends. I also suggest bilingual signage throughout the site. And here also another uh, inspiration for a natural material playground. This is a closer look of the amphitheater that it's inspired by the, the shape of the hawk's nest. And this is the nature observation deck that I, I got inspired by the Natural Museum, um, the Natural History Museum downtown LA. And they have a space similar to this where you go in, it's in the middle of the trees and there is a wall that you can see through, but also that has these windows that you can peek through and see what's going on in nature. And it's also a very relaxing, quiet place. And I thought it would be wonderful to have that on that wild area where kids now don't have access. So as a conclusion, we started with 74% impermeable surface, 29 and a half of the school has a canopy cover and only six and a half a percent, it is over the clay area. And after greening Aldama, we will increase by 25% the permeable surface. We will increase the tree canopy by 30% and 25 and 29,000 square feet of extra uh, wild green area will be added for kids to have access. So this is the final design concept for Aldama Elementary School, also known as the NEST. Thank you.